This little lion man hasn't had too much to stand up and shout about over the last decade, but now with the RCZ, it's out with the numbers and in with the letters, as they've had an injection of style and they've added a bit of desirability into the pug lineup. Designed in house this time, not by the Prima Farina pens of the past, this 2 plus 2 sporty coupe looks amazing. The double bubble roof puts Beyonce's curves to shame, aluminium pillars, muscular haunches, and even the corporate grille looks good. Peugeot didn't spend all the budget on the outside though, as they continue with the design injection inside. We've got leather fascias, this plain sporting steering wheel, and these sport bucket seats. But it feels a bit cheap and nasty inside with some of the plastics, and it's not the most ergonomic place in the world. I've got arms like Mr. Ticker and I can't even touch all the buttons. There are three trim levels available for the RCZ, this being the mid-range GT spec. And for that you get leather upholstery, parking sensors, and these really good dipping door mirrors to stop the 19-inch wheels having a fight with the kerb. We've also got the optional sat-nav in place, which really isn't that good because it doesn't take full postcodes and you operate it via this iDrive with a nipple on top, which feels really cheap and snaps back quicker than a mouse trap. To add a bit of elegance to the RCZ, Peugeot decided to stick in these semi-analog, semi-digital clocks at the front. They've all got a bit of a mind of their own, as you can see. Ooh. But enough talking about. Peugeots of the past always used to look good and drive well. But this sporty coupe has obviously got to try and do its best. So the only way to test that is to hit the road. The car we're testing is the THP 200 model. That's a 1.6 litre turbocharged petrol unit. It's the same one that's used in the Mini Cooper S. There are smaller engines available with 156 brake horsepower petrol or 163 brake horsepower diesel. But if you want to get with the sporting character of the car, this is the engine to have. The turbocharger kicks in about 2000 RPM and is really linear with its power delivery. It does fizzle out nearer the top, but that's to be expected with a smaller unit like this. So, does this RCZ keep up with the handling dynamics of Pugs of the Past? Unfortunately not. Although it does have a great turn in and loads of grip with those big wheels at the front, there is a distinct lack of feel in the car. The weight of the steering is comforting, but there's just no feedback coming through as well as the pedals. The clutch is extremely long and the brake, it takes loads of servo assistance before you actually get to the biting point. And the gear shift, it may be short, but it isn't the smoothest things in the world if you fight for second to third gear and third to fourth. But I'm not getting a bit caught up on the pug of the past thing. Is this car really meant for the driver dynamics? Well, for people like us, it should be, you know, real petrol heads. But for people who are gonna buy this car, a lot of it is about show, and this car, it has some go and a lot of show. It has an artificial membrane that pumps noise through from the bulkhead to give it that sporting feel. And it may not be the fastest thing in the world, but it does put a smile on your face. The price is starting at £21,000 all the way up to 30 for a full spec 200 model like this. It is one of the most affordable ways to get the best looking cars on the road today. The driving dynamics may not leave you thrashing around the country roads until the petrol tank runs dry. But I guarantee you, when you do stop, you'll take a second look at this car. And if that's what proof that Peugeot have their mojo back, I don't know what is. <laughs> <laughs>